Death comes for us all, and when it does, it throws our bodies through an icky, sciency, and surprisingly dramatic process of decay, from your last breath to the moment your body becomes worm food. It's gross, it's weird, and honestly, it's kind of metal. And that's why, today, we're going to take a look at the eight stages of death. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History channel. After that, please leave a comment and let us know what other morbid topics you would like to hear about. Okay, settle in, because this one is to die for. As Miracle Max taught us in The Prince's Bride, there are two types of dead, mostly dead and all dead. In the real world, mostly dead is known as clinical death, and when you're clinically dead, your heart stops beating, your lungs stop breathing, and your brain is no longer getting oxygen. You're technically dead, but not completely out of the game yet. It's more like your body is an iPhone that just ran out of juice. It's technically off, but some processes are still humming. Your brain will keep firing for up to 10 minutes, and your cells keep chugging along, albeit really confused. The stories you've heard about people having weird, metaphysical near-death experiences typically take place during this window. Tunnels of light, floating sensations, the whole I saw grandma thing. Whether it's real or imagined, it's all part of being clinically dead. That's because clinical death is the moment when vital signs cease, but resuscitation is still possible. Think CPR, defibrillators, and that heroic doctor save someone from flatlining moment on Grey's Anatomy. When you're clinically dead, you've got maybe four to six minutes before brain cells start dying from lack of oxygen, and death becomes less of a temporary inconvenience and more of a permanent situation. So if you're planning to fake your death, that's your window, because after that, you're all dead, otherwise known as biological death. This is when the window closes, and no amount of CPR is bringing you back now. Biological death is when permanent cellular damage sets in. The brain cells are the first to go, followed by the rest of your body. Your tissues are starved of oxygen. Enzymes start breaking down cells, and without circulation to clean up the mess, you start decomposing from the inside. Think of it like your body is a party that just ended, and the guests are drunk, vomiting, and refusing to leave. And that's when the real fun starts. Pallor mortis is a fancy Latin term that for all intents and purposes means that you start looking pale as hell. Literally translated, it means paleness of death. And it sets in roughly 15 to 30 minutes after you reach your expiration date, so to speak. Basically, your blood pressure crashes and your blood stops circulating. With nothing pushing it around, the blood drains from your face like someone told you the Starbucks line is out of cold foam. You go from a vibrant human to Casper the lifeless ghost. As such, pallor mortis is the first visible clue for anyone wondering, hey, are they just napping or... Ooh. Anyway, pallor mortis isn't long lasting, but it is very telling and it makes your Tinder profile way less swipeable. Alger mortis means death chill, which sounds like the worst Mountain Dew flavor ever. It's the stage where a body starts cooling down. Your temperature then drops about 1.5 degrees Fahrenheit per hour until it matches room temperature. After 12 hours, you're basically a human popsicle, unless you're outside, in Phoenix, in July. Otherwise, Alger mortis is when people say the body was cold to the touch, which is just a polite way of saying yeah, this dude is definitely dead. On the upside, Alger mortis can help forensic scientists estimate time of death. It's not always reliable because factors like clothing, weather, and body size can skew the chill curve. And yes, your fat will keep you warmer longer, making it the only time your love handles will be a scientific advantage. Rigor mortis is the most famous one. It means the stiffening of death, and it's when your muscles contract and lock up, essentially making you a life-size action figure. Rigor mortis kicks in around two to six hours after death and peaks at around 12. 
All the muscles in your body become rigid due to chemical changes, mainly calcium flooding the muscle fibers without energy to relax them. So yes, the rumors are true. Dead bodies can sit up or even clench their fists post-mortem. It's not ghosts, it's biochemistry. Also, fun fact, the jaw is one of the first areas to stiffen, which is why morticians often tie it shut. Otherwise, open casket funerals get way more awkward. Anyway, after 24 to 48 hours, your muscles relax again and you go all floppy. It's kind of like being drunk, except that you're dead. Liver mortis is also known as post-mortem lividity, or why is Uncle Frank turning purple? What happens is that after circulation stops, gravity pulls the blood to the lowest parts of the body, causing a purplish-red discoloration in those areas. This can start within 20 minutes, but becomes obvious around two to four hours after death. You basically get death bruises, which sounds like a killer name for a metal band, but is actually a gross reality for the deceased. Liver mortis patches can help forensic investigators figure out if you died lying down, sitting, or hanging upside down like a bat, which frankly is a pretty goth way to go. If the lividity doesn't match the story, homicide detectives start asking questions. It's the kind of thing CSI nerds live for. Putrefaction is the polite term for your body bloating, oozing, and smelling like death itself. It's where dying gets real funky. Welcome to the Bloat Zone. During putrefaction, your internal bacteria realize the landlord has left the building and throw a rave. Bacteria that used to help you digest Taco Bell now start eating you. They release gases that swell the body and cause eyes to bulge, tongues to protrude, and make your body puff up like a microwaved marshmallow. This stage usually begins within 24 to 72 hours, depending on the environment. If it's warm and humid, congratulations, you're gonna be fast-tracked to human soup. And yes, your body can literally explode from gas buildup. It's rare, but when it happens, it's horrifying, like a meat pinata. So, you know, something to look forward to. Decomposition is the grand finale of Gross, where things really start to give off a low-budget horror movie meets nature documentary vibe. Your organs start liquefying like they just gave up. Your skin blisters like it's been personally insulted and fluids began leaking out of every possible orifice, probably inventing a few new ones just for flair. Basically, you're melting faster than a popsicle on a California sidewalk during summer. And then come the guests, flies, beetles, microbes, and maybe even four kids from your hometown who have hiked miles on foot just to see a dead body. In other words, you are now the hottest post-mortem hangout in town. This stage has many names, true decomposition, biotic decomposition, or as your neighborhood raccoons call it, dinner. If putrefaction was the trailer, decomposition is the whole movie. Bacteria go full demolition crew, body down into tiny bits of organic matter until you're nothing but bones, goo, and possibly a cautionary tale. And like with all horror films, the runtime varies. Factors like temperature, humidity, burial conditions, and even your diet can speed things up or slow them down. Interestingly, meat eaters decompose faster than vegetarians. Yep, turns out bacon doesn't just mess with your arteries while you're alive. It also helps bacteria party harder after you die. After all the bloating, oozing, melting, and general grossness, your body finally chills out and dries up. Welcome to the minimalist phase of death. No muscles, no fat, no juicy bits. Just you, your bones, and the opportunity to flank David S. Pumpkins. Skeletonization is pretty straightforward. All your soft tissue disappears, either decomposed, devoured, or dissolved, leaving nothing but your skeleton and maybe a few stubborn ligaments that are like, I'm not done yet. Depending on the environment, this process can take weeks or years. If you die in a hot, humid swamp, you'll be skeletonized faster than your ex found a rebound. On the other hand, if it's dry and cold, you might mummify first, like a desert version of jerky. And it gets weirder. 
If you die in a peat bog, congratulations, you've just been naturally embalmed. Because that spongy, acidic moss works like a do-it-yourself funeral director. And if you die somewhere freezing, like the side of Everest, you might still look like you're taking a nap, even if you died in 1977. If you're buried in a coffin, you'll experience slower decomposition. And if you're cremated, well, in that case, you can just skip to credits. But in most instances, once the bacteria, bugs, and whatever ate your pancreas finish the buffet, nature strips you down to the bone. Of course, even skeletons don't last forever. They're tough, no doubt. But eventually, nature goes full Marie Kondo and clears them out too. At least, it usually does. If the conditions are just right, like Goldilocks right, your bony bits might dodge the dust and become fossilized instead, which is honestly the best chance most of us have at achieving immortality. Here's how it works. Your skeleton, now just chilling underground like it's hiding from student loans, gets buried under layers of sediment. Over thousands of years, your bones start to break down. But before they piece out entirely, minerals sneak in and start replacing the organic material, turning your body into a rock-solid version of its former self. Kind of like nature's 3D printing. Alternatively, if your bones completely dissolve, minerals might just fill in the empty space left behind and harden into your bone-shaped ghost. That's called a cast fossil. Not to be confused with the fossils in the cast of the Fast and Furious movies, who also seem like they'll just go on forever. But yeah, if you play your cards right, you could be discovered by future archaeologists and featured in a museum next to a sign that says, unknown individual, definitely didn't floss. It's poetic, really. You spent your whole life trying to make an impression. And in the end, you literally did. The point of all of this is that death is a process, not an event. Your body goes on one last wild ride, cooling down, stiffening up, bloating out, breaking down, and finally becoming bones. It's gross, and it's weird, but it's also kind of beautiful. All that decay, it's what feeds the earth, creates soil, nourishes life. You don't just die, you become part of the eternal cycle of the world. Or you become a mummy and get to duke it out with Brandon Fraser. Good luck with that. So what do you think? And which of these facts did you find the most surprising? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from Weird History.